Today is a new podcast for Change Podcast and a new topic that we will explore. Today's topic might sound a little serious, but it's something that we all experience to a certain degree, and that is loneliness. And to talk about loneliness, I have with me Danielle Gaudet. She is a teacher and educator at um, Body and Brain Yoga, and she's been helping people deal with this exact same issue for a long, long time. So she's a great person to talk about this very deep topic of loneliness. So I'm very glad to have her here. Hi, Danielle. Hi, Linda. Thank you for having me. Yes. So loneliness. Loneliness, I think, is probably the silent killer that really drives people crazy. You know, people say stress is the silent killer, but I think loneliness is something a little bit more serious than stress. Like if you see all, all these like tragedies that happen around the world where people go crazy and like kill people or like do horrible things to other people, I feel like at the root of all of that is some sense of loneliness, some sense of huge emptiness that they feel. So I really wanted to explore this topic of loneliness because I know that I suffer from loneliness for a long, long, long time. And I know lots of people around me that are either they admit and are aware that they're lonely or it's very obvious that they're lonely, but they don't realize that they're lonely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So what do you think about loneliness? When you say, when you say the word loneliness, what kind of comes to your mind? So that's such an interesting question to me. You know, I feel I've experienced it different ways in my life. Sometimes I think about, you know, Mm, like the end of like a breakup, like the end of a relationship or the a loss of a loved one. And then there can be a feeling of emptiness and aloneness that comes. Mm -hmm. That's, that's one way that comes to my mind. But another way is that I feel like I've become more and more, the more I've worked with people like acutely aware that I think I agree exactly what you're saying like loneliness is the root it's underneath and then most of the time we people society are like doing so many things just to avoid loneliness but we don't know it people don't know it so whether that's entertainment you know addictions um just like yeah, running around here and there, socializing, traveling, like just kind of just trying to escape mm -hmm. their own lonely feeling. That's really what I'm aware of more these days. When I think about the word loneliness and I kind of look at myself and I look around me, I feel like, wow, I think the root of so many of our behaviors is just to avoid that overwhelming feeling. Mm -hmm. It's really hard for people to to feel it and face it so much so that unconsciously they're just like we're running away from it mm -hmm. and i think even in today's society we're getting more and more lonely because we have more and more opportunity to just be by ourselves on our smartphones on our tablets we don't have to talk to anybody we could find like we could socialize on Facebook, you know, Instagram, we can have virtual friends and not have any touch with reality. And I think because our culture is kind of becoming more towards that, loneliness is something that is becoming a deeper and deeper issue, which causes things like anxiety, depression, you know, hopelessness. Mm -hmm. A lot of young people these days feel very hopeless, you know, at the things that are going on around us or maybe they suffer from deep loneliness too. So I think loneliness is something that definitely needs to be explored and talked about. And something that I, that I realized from my own experience with loneliness, like you said, is that we try to fill it with something. You know, we try to fill it with, with a relationship or more money or, you know, more friends, more status. And I know that I also try to do that too. You know, I, for a big chunk of my life, probably for my whole life until I went on a spiritual journey to find myself, my whole life, I carried this gaping hole in my chest and I didn't know what it was. 
You know, I had no idea why it was there, but I knew that I felt so empty. Something inside of me at the pit of my being felt so empty. But it was ironic because I had lots of friends. I went out all the time. I socialized, you know, um, and I, I, I was just always around people. <laughs> But I was so, so lonely. And I realized the more I did, you know, I, I, I started partying. I started doing all these things that society told me would make me happy. But I realized the more I got into that kind of stuff, instead of making me feel better, it made me feel better temporarily when I was with my friends. But when we all went our ways and I went back home, that gaping hole was still there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And... I, I so clearly remember those days because even though on the outside it looked like I had such a good fun life, mm -hmm. I was like crying and screaming inside when I was by myself and I didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So do you think loneliness even serves a purpose? Like why do human beings experience loneliness? Like if it didn't serve a purpose, because I, I feel according to like, evolution and natural selection everything in life serves some kind of purpose has some meaning why it's there even a mosquito even though it seems like a pest it has a role in the food chain you know it has a role a reason why it's there so loneliness this emotion that seems so bad so toxic so useless what do you do you have any ideas why human beings you think that we have loneliness does it serve a purpose for anything Mm, well, so I, I think of it kind of spiritually. Mm -hmm. So first of all, you know, if, if we are one, right, if we are all one inside of this one life force, this one living energy, but in the physical body, we feel, we don't feel that oneness because in the physical body, we're completely separated. So it'll be very natural, first of all, that we would feel loneliness because we are one, but in the physical body, we're not one, we're separate. So, so it's kind of un, it's kind of unnatural. It's not our original state. So it would be sort of, I think it's kind of normal that we're constantly seeking for the togetherness driven by that lonely feeling. We're seeking for the togetherness, but at the same time, if we are able to be with that feeling, so like instead of fight the feeling, right? Instead of try to avoid the feeling, get away from the feeling and create our lives, like we just talked about, based on trying to get away from the feeling. That's what we're spending so much energy doing. But if instead of that, we could just be with the feeling and sink into the feeling, I think the opposite would happen. In. like loneliness can become a bridge then that's the purpose that it can serve mm -hmm. that instead of realizing instead of feeling like I'm lonely so I have to try to connect outside of me mm -hmm. I'm I feel loneliness therefore I need to just stay in that space and sort of sink into that feeling and right on the other side of it right on the other side is our own internal feeling of fulfillment mm -hmm. it's right there but, you know, that connection with that inner fulfillment doesn't come easily. We have to pass through those, those layers and those obstacles inside of us. Right. We have to do the inner work. Right. So I feel like it's like a bridge, mm -hmm. like a bridge into that space. And depending on how you respond to it is going to create your life. If you respond to it in a way like you're trying to get it, just racing and running away from it. I feel like people are just racing at full speed away from it. Running in no direction. Yeah, just they don't know where they, they, they don't know what they're running from. They just want to run. Yeah, exactly. So it's, cha it's chaotic. And that's why people feel worse and worse. Or like we have these phones and things and we keep developing technology and things to get away, to get away from it. And then we feel more lonely. But if we could just be with it, and just accept, you know, and that's a lot, of, a lot of the stuff when I work with emotions and trauma and things like that, that we've talked about before, that being with the feeling, loneliness is a really good one to practice, to try to feel it, stay calm, be with it. I feel like it's a bridge to bring us closer to ourselves, closer to our like essence. Mm 
yeah. our, our original nature, where we could find a lot of peace and fulfillment, but <laughs> more peace and fulfillment than we find trying to escape from our loneliness. Right. Yeah. So I think there's people out there who they, they already like know this, you know, they know that we should like feel it and be with it. But it's, I, I read somewhere that I think loneliness is something that people are really afraid of, mm. you know, like they, they fear. I read that the number one fear that people have these days, can you guess what the number one fear people have these days? It's boredom. Mm. People are afraid of being bored. In other words, people are afraid of, being like by themselves, being lonely, being yeah. alone. Yeah. yeah. And I think that's why we seek out relationships so much, you know, yeah. and we seek out friends so much because we're afraid of loneliness. Yeah. So when we experience that, when, when we're in a place where we fear this loneliness, you're like yeah. so afraid to be lonely that you're running around like a chicken with its head cut off. Yeah. How do we, how can we train ourselves to sit in that loneliness, you know? And how can we resist the temptation? Let's say we did sit in that loneliness for a little bit, but we, we hate it, you know, and resist the temptation of finding a distraction. Mm. You have any tips based on um, maybe something you've taught people or I don't know. I, I think that's something that I'm also curious about too, because there's so many like temptations out there to escape that loneliness. Okay. And especially if it's such a painful place for me, if it's a painful and scary place for me, how can I sit there and see the rainbow on the other side? Yeah. So I think that it's all about, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no like, easy kind of, there's no easy way out of it. It's all about increasing awareness and sensitivity. So like you're saying, oh, I don't like this feeling of loneliness, I wanna get away from it. But if you just breathe and calm down and are able to really sense what you're really feeling, then it might be that you don't like the feeling of fear and anxiety that's coming over you. Mm. Maybe that's the first thing that you have to practice with. Mm. And actually the loneliness itself isn't that bad, but it's the fear that's even bigger. Mm -hmm. You know, our imagination is one of the biggest problems. We imagine being alone, and then that seems so bad. Mm -hmm. We imagine, oh, nobody loves me, I'll be so lonely, and then fear comes up, and then we have to deal with fear. Right. So if we increase our awareness and sensitivity and get really good and comfortable at just all of those feelings, there's nothing wrong with any of them. The biggest enemy is ourselves. Mm -hmm. Those things are, they're clouds. They're like mist. They'll just part if we, can, if we can just be calm and breathe and stay with it. And I know it's not easy. But the only way to improve is like increase awareness. Of really, really, what am I feeling now? And really, really, what am I running away from? Because... Yeah, again, it's not necessarily, I think that the loneliness itself, when we really fully face it, we almost can have a spiritual moment at that time. Oh, definitely. Know? I agree. Yeah, something really peaceful and healing could happen when you just completely be with it. But it's right up before that when you're so anxious and you're depressed about it and you're scared about it and it means this and this and it means you're not this and that and it means other people have this and you don't. Like all of those things, we have to really like increase our ability to catch those things that are controlling us. Mm -hmm then I think we can endure it more. I heard once a, a quote from some, somewhere I heard a great teacher say that if you can watch and observe your loneliness, then you can be enlightened. Mm. Yeah. The ability to watch it, observe it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Increases our spiritual, our consciousness level a lot. I totally believe that because if you if we're mature enough and courageous enough to watch something that is so painful and dark within us, then how can you not be enlightened? <laughs> you know, right, right. Uh, and to kind of piggyback off what you said, I think you know, having done my own internal work, you know, and having been on this journey to myself of. Find, finding who I am and what I want, which was originally inspired by the fact that I was so lonely, the mm -hmm. fact that I felt so empty and nothing in my material world 
money, friends, food, traveling, nothing in that world fulfilled me. It made my brain shift over to the other side and say, okay, then what do I want? And who am I truly? You know? Mm -hmm. So I was even inspired to find myself because of the loneliness I felt. Mm -hmm. So it was a really good tool. But when, during that journey that I had, what I realized was that the reason why my, my loneliness made me feel so anxious and empty and depressed was exactly what you said. It's because I was resisting it. I was fighting it and I was not admitting fully, like not truly accepting that I felt lonely. Mm. You know, mm -hmm. it was, I knew I felt lonely, but I didn't want to feel lonely. Mm -hmm. So I was rejecting this and pretending and hiding it under the rug, stuffing it in, mm -hmm. trying to put a band aid over it. But I realized that the anxiety I had against loneliness came from that resistance came from that fight that I had with this emotion. But when I fully accepted, looked at it in the face and said, I am effing lonely. <laughs> I am like, I'm like effed up, you know, like I thought I tried so hard to put my life together and put up this front that like I had everything going on. But when I fully surrendered and said, my life is pretty shitty. You know, I am not happy. I am not as great as I want people to think I am. You know, I'm not as happy as what I want people to think I am. When I fully accepted that and admitted it to myself, and I looked at loneliness and said, yes, you are here in me, and I see you, and what am I going to do about it? It's there. When I accepted that, the strangest thing happened was that I felt very calm, mm -hmm. very calm and very peaceful and not so like inside me, mm -hmm. which I think is exactly what you were talking about, you know, just yeah. accepting it. That's right. Accepting it. It's amazing. Yeah. Do you have any stories of your own loneliness struggles that you had? One thing I can say for sure, and again, as I said at the beginning, like I've experienced it in many different ways, but one thing, one more kind of recent thing that I realized when I really try to manage my thoughts, when I, when I looked at myself closely and felt like, you know, I need to manage my thoughts. There's some negative, unhealthy thinking patterns going on that aren't helping me be happy and they're not helping me be healthy and I need to cut them off as they're coming up. I need to be aware of them and refrain from following them down the pattern that they go. And when I started to really, really try to do that, like dramatic thoughts, mm -hmm. complaining thoughts, blaming thoughts, all these kind of thoughts when I was like, nope, that's a blaming thought. Don't do that. Oh, that's a drama. Now you're just kind of enjoying drama as if you're eating. It's a popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> right? So when I tried to like nip those things as I saw them, again, it, it was related to my own increasing my awareness of what I was really thinking. Mm -hmm. When I stop, 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 I realized that those unhealthy thinking patterns were just covering up my loneliness when I stopped all of them it was just like well what am I gonna do here I don't have anything to think about I don't have anything to entertain me I just have to kind of be here with myself and feel me oh that was a huge aha moment for me like, oh there is a a lot of those unhealthy thoughts were built on trying to get away from my own lonely or empty feeling. Then when I could just sit in that lonely and empty feeling, I didn't have to engage in those thoughts. And I naturally felt calmer, more peaceful, which led me to feel happier and healthier inside. Mm -hmm. Not necessarily easy to stay there and do and requires a lot of continued like awareness. But that was a big aha for me mm -hmm. to realize even those thinking patterns, that we just do so habitually. 
complain about that or blame that just or just engage in a dramatic conversation <laughs> with a friend. And then what for what? You know, a lot of times after those conversations when we finish and then we feel like an emptiness. Yeah, we feel like shit. We <laughs> <laughs> <I> feel good. <laughs> because it's trying to avoid and cover up that. Mm -hmm. So that's why I realized, oh, the key is increasing, just increasing and increasing awareness, being brave enough. Mm -hmm. So it takes the courage. Mm -hmm. So that kind of speaks to what you said earlier. Like, what can we say when people are just feel like panic if they think about being lonely? Yeah, it requires a certain degree of courage to sort of sit in it and be really honest with yourself and look really closely at what you're doing to yourself. Right. What you're doing. And that, like you said, like that fight about it, that resistance of it that running from it hiding from it avoiding and not accepting makes us so much more sympathetic. so that was my mm -hmm. awakening about myself I was and I was so happy to realize it yeah yeah I was very happy the moment that I realized I was like this is so great I can just <laughs> get in this lonely feeling and I could because once I sit in the lonely feeling it dissolves into a very peaceful feeling of connection mm -hmm. like you don't just sit there and feel loneliness forever it, just, it kind of morphs into feeling like oh but I'm you know I'm part of nature this we're all sort of standing as independent life life mm -hmm. but we're also interconnected mm -hmm. like it kind of awakened to those things when I could stay with it mm -hmm. And then I was so relieved that I didn't have to do those unhealthy behaviors <laughs> to yeah. keep, to really realize what I was doing. That was your moment of enlightenment. Yeah, that was my moment. And the most, the thing that's really ironic, and we see this in the news, we see this everywhere, is that some of the most successful people who have the most people around them, the most resources, the most comforts and luxury, are some of the most loneliest people. And we see that a lot in Hollywood. A mm. lot of people in Hollywood, they have all of these fans, people who will just cry at their presence, people who scream their name, people who get their, get their celebrity names tattooed on them. You know, these raging fans all around the world, they make millions of dollars and they have so many things that they should be proud of. But people in Hollywood, they are some of the most loneliest people and they resort to things like drugs, suicide, a huge yeah. thing, huge yeah. thing in that world. Yeah, I was just going to say that because you hear about, you know, so I feel like there's an increase of suicide these days, and I've been thinking about it too. Wow, they feel really, really empty. Something's really lacking to drive them to that place. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think that from my own experience with loneliness is that – I think when we feel loneliness, it's our brain or something inside of us that is kind of like knocking at our door, asking mm. us to like check in with ourselves, mm. you know, because mm. especially when, when we're taught to succeed, you know, go to a good school, get a good job, get a good career, get a good like salary. When we're like so taught to, to pursue these things, we, we go on autopilot, you know, and we just like pursue these things like a hungry lion just eating and eating and eating everything in its path like I know that's that's what I did as well like what I wanted was success you know because society told me that if you succeed my parents even told me if you succeed if you go to a good school have a good job get a get a good you know husband and have make good money get live in a nice house what more could you want you know that's what society kind of says so because we're taught that I realized I was just living my life craving these things. Like, what, what can I do to make more money? You know, what can I do to get better grades? What can I do to get better this, 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 and just ah, ma, 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 ma. And in the process, what I really realized was I lost myself. Mm -hmm. I lost who I truly was. I lost all the things that I liked doing and I was living a life that I thought I should be living 
not the life that I wanted to live, not the life that was authentic to myself, not the life. I was doing things that were out of my character. I was becoming a person that I knew deep down inside I wasn't. Mm -hmm. And when I saw that, I felt that that disconnect was where a big part of my loneliness came from. That I was living a life that was not true to me, that I was living this autopilot life that society has wrote out for everyone. It's like a one size fits all prescription. Okay, go to high, like go to elementary school, go to middle school, go to high school, go to college, get a master's degree, and then get an internship, and then you'll get a job, and then you'll buy a house. Like it's like a one size fits all formula that our society gives us, you know? Yeah. So something that I do want to tell people that people know about, if you're feeling that kind of loneliness, is take a step back. Like take a step back from everything that's going on around you and ask, is this life that I'm living right now, my thought patterns, my actions, my every day, is this truly who I am? Is this truly the person I want to be? And be very honest. Is this really a good reflection of who and what I like and who I am? And if it's not, that is why you're lonely. Because your body is telling you to, whoa there, stop, hello, red flag, red flag, pay attention, pay attention. Mm -hmm. So that kind of goes back to what we were talking about earlier. Like, what's the purpose of loneliness? You know, why do we have it? And you, you took it on a spiritual level. And I think even finding yourself itself is a spiritual experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we can say it's a, it's a bridge into something else. It's a signal. Right, that's what you're saying. It's a warning bell. Yeah. To look at yourself more closely and to look at your life more closely. Be more honest with right. yourself. Get closer to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because your inside is thing the most is you. Yeah. And the thing about human beings is that we're very smart, but we're also very dumb. We're also very, <laughs> very like. What I mean by that is, is we don't pay attention to ourselves or our bodies until we're very sick or until mm -hmm. we get into a car crash, until something tragic happens that slaps us across the face. We don't really check in with our body. We don't check in with our mind. We don't check in with ourselves and loneliness, even though it's not like a physical thing, it's a big emotional pain. It's a big emotional suffering that takes a toll on our psyche, that takes a toll on our well-being. And I think that also is kind of like, like nature's way, just like how, you know, disease and all these things are nature's way to say, hello, you know, slow down. I think loneliness is definitely one of those things too. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah 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 i can get that for sure i wish my wish is for people to really be more more aware of how loneliness is influencing mm -hmm. their lives yeah they oh, may not realize it but they should look around at their life at those all the things that they have to avoid it that they're surrounded by and just take a look at it and just imagine if i didn't have those things what would i feel inside yeah awareness. yeah the more people know yeah awareness the more people know about themselves it's going to be a healthier person a healthier family a healthier society for sure mm -hmm. I think awareness is kind of like the, the cherry on top of everything we talked about, you know, becoming aware of your loneliness and becoming aware of how the loneliness is affecting you and mm -hmm. just becoming aware of you. Like what is really mm -hmm. going on inside and how is the signal of loneliness a big flashing light cue to check in with me? Am I living the life I want? Am I being true to myself? All these questions of, you know, existential questions that are very, very important in determining the remaining years of your life. Mm -hmm. Because mm -hmm. a lot of the times we think we're, we, we think we're powerless, you know, especially with a government that feel that seems like they don't listen to its people. You know, we, we see lots of clues around us that 
make us feel like we have no power. You know, the one individual has no power. I know I felt that way. I felt really powerless thinking, what can my one little small actions, how, can it really affect the world? You know, can it really have any influence on anything? Mm -hmm. But I want to tell everyone who is listening to this podcast that we always have the power to choose, even though it doesn't seem like we do, even though it seems like people are making choices for us, things are being placed onto us and we're being forced to live a certain way and we're just a victim to our environment, our circumstances. One thing that I really, really felt and I'm still feeling right now is that we always have the power to choose how we react to things, how we handle certain things, what, what next step we will make what mm -hmm. environment mm -hmm. we will create, what circumstances we will create. So never ever feel like you're powerless in your situation because that will make you stuck there forever. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that just speaks even more <laughs> to why it's so important for people to become more aware, wake up, pay attention to themselves, know themselves, be honest so that they can make honest choices, so that they can take their power back. Because otherwise, if you don't know and you're just, then you're kind of just a, <laughs> you're just a zombie. You're just like a robot to the society. You're just following along with whatever this, oh yeah, yeah, I should entertain myself more. Yeah, yeah, I should, you know, complain more. I should eat more delicious things. You're just, you're just following it. It's really important to pay attention so that you can recover that choosing power that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need to be empowered by looking at ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think you're, I totally agree with you, Linda. Like, loneliness can become this great opportunity to see yourself and take your power back. Yeah. And grab your choosing power, and recreate your life in a new way. Yeah. I love this topic. Loneliness is something that really I resonate with because I know how much I suffered every single day from that feeling of loneliness, mm -hmm. crying myself to sleep in silence, you know, not telling any of my friends because God forbid they find out that I'm really empty and lonely inside. <laughs> mm -hmm. So loneliness is a topic that I so have such a passion for. I could talk about loneliness for hours, <laughs> but we don't have hours on this podcast. <laughs> so I know, Danielle, you do a blog and you yeah. talk a lot about your own story. And I read some of your blog posts and they're very like emotionally in tune, you know, like it's about, it's a lot about your feelings and stuff. Can you, so can you tell us a little bit more about what you do on your blog? Sure. So um, my blog is daniellegaudet.com. So it's nothing fancy. It's just daniellegaudet.com. And then it, it's, I kind of titled it Healing Tree. That's the, that's the term I like to use. And yeah, I, I also titled it at the beginning, it's the scrapbook of my heart. Oh, so it's just that. an open exploration. Yeah, it's like an open exploration of First of all, my story, you know, I was adopted, so I explore adoption. I had a mother who, I was raised with a mother who had mental illness. I explore that. She passed away not long ago. I explore that. And I explore one by one the different things of my own healing journey, my own spiritual journey, so many things and that, I, that I encounter with my students, um, topics of forgiveness and acceptance and all kinds of topics. Yeah, I'm just sort of exploring them. I'm just sharing my own awakenings or great quotes I've heard. Um, just to just to get closer to people because I think this is another thing. People can feel alone in their own journey, right? And that feeds their loneliness. But to realize just so many people are in this journey together. We're all experiencing the same thing. So, so it's like a tree, right? A big tree that becomes the stretches out its branches and becomes the home for many birds and many creatures to sleep on and eat from and take a rest. It's like that. I wanted the blog to be a space like that for people with 
all kinds of things that they think and feel could be spiritual or not could be the healing of I mean the topic of healing or not our emotions as a, a safe space for people to come and just read share if they want ask if they want so I imagine Healing Tree like we're sitting in the cozy room together, <laughs> Love that. opening our hearts together. And it's been great. I've loved it so much. I've loved every single person who's ever, you know, posted any comments. I've enjoyed meeting new people and just it inspires me to talk about it inspires me to talk about my own journey and to utilize all the things, the good and the bad, to be you know, helpful to other people, other souls on the journey in the same way. So yeah, that's my blog. I love that. Just listening to your description about it, you know, have like that place where all the creatures can live there and take a rest. Like I just, I felt my heart just, (sighs) (laughs) yes, that's right. That's healing tree. (laughs) Thank you. So if you guys want to check out Danielle's blog, we'll, um, post the link in the description below so you guys can click it and check it out. And I'm sure she has really, really great stories in there. So please connect with her. And if you're lonely and you feel like no friend, you have no friends, at least you have me and Danielle. Right? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you can always talk to us in the comments. We'll respond to every single one of them. So you have two friends in us already. <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Danielle. This was so fun hanging out with you. Yeah, thank you. I enjoyed talking about it together with you, Linda. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for tuning into this podcast. Danielle, do you have any last words for for the listeners out there? Just be strong. Have courage. Everybody's going through this. This is a normal thing. Yeah, be brave. Let's overcome it together. Yes. yes. <laughs> We're all friends. Yes, that's my last thing that I want to say. We're your friends. We're all friends here. Let's all try to be friends. And I think uh, we mentioned that, you know, this online space, like with smartphones and everything could be a very lonely place. But if we use it well, like what we're doing right now, having conversations about these things, it could be a very comforting and social place as well. So don't forget that, you know, even though you might think you're all alone, no one cares about you, there's no one to help you, we're never truly ever alone. It's just a state of being in our mind that if you turn it over in the same situation, you will see how not lonely you actually are. (laughs) Right. Yeah. So thank you so much, everyone, for listening. That's it for today. And thank you, Danielle, so much. Thank you. Bye, everyone.